What are the five themes of geography? In an effort to better define the impact of geography on our lives and the world around us, geographers have divided the study of geography into five basic categories or themes. These five themes are location, place, relationships within places, movement, and region. We'll explore each of these themes individually. First, location. Location can be described in two ways, absolute location and relative location. Absolute location is expressed in terms of the latitude and longitude coordinates of a specific place on Earth. In some ways, it is similar to a person's address, only on a global scale. Every city has a unique set of coordinates to mark its location on the Earth. By knowing the latitude and longitude of a city, you can find its absolute location anywhere in the world. For example, the city of Los Angeles, California is located at approximately 34 degrees north latitude and 118 degrees west longitude. Paris, France is located at approximately 49 degrees north latitude and 2 degrees east longitude. And Cape Town, South Africa is located at approximately 34 degrees south latitude and 18 degrees east longitude. Relative location, on the other hand, describes a place in terms of its relation to other places and things around it. For instance, London, the capital of the United Kingdom, is located on the Thames River, a major waterway. Its development into a world center was in many respects relative to its location near that waterway. In the centuries before planes, trains, and automobiles, seagoing vessels were the most common form of transportation. Convenient access to waterways became a principal factor in the establishment of many major cities. Likewise, the city of New Orleans, Louisiana, became a major port city because of its strategic location near the mouth of the Mississippi River. As technology changed, other towns grew into major cities because of their accessibility to railroad lines. The city of Chicago, Illinois, grew in importance when new improvements in transportation made it more accessible too. Unlike absolute location, relative location can change over time. For example, when gold and silver deposits were discovered in the American Old West, many cities and towns grew up next to them virtually overnight. Many of these same boom towns became abandoned ghost towns when the nearby mineral resources were depleted and everyone moved away. The second major theme of geography is place. Place characteristics are described in one of two ways, physical characteristics and human characteristics. When we talk about the physical characteristics of a place, we're basically talking about the natural or physical features of the Earth. For instance, the unusual rock formations found in the Grand Canyon in the American Southwest, the subarctic climate found in Alaska and Canada, the lush tropical vegetation like that found in the islands of Hawaii, and the native or indigenous wildlife of Australia are all examples of the physical characteristics of a place. How such natural phenomena were formed and how they are constantly changing are questions frequently investigated and explored by geographers. 
Does the geography of a place ever change? Earthquakes are a good example of how change in the physical features of the Earth can take place. By studying fault lines like the famous San Andreas Fault in Southern California, geographers and other scientists better understand how earthquakes happen. This map of the Earth's hotspots demonstrates how scientists can more accurately predict areas most susceptible to earthquakes and other seismic activity. The study of these hotspots is included in the theory known as plate tectonics. This theory basically states that the Earth's outer shell is composed of a number of large unanchored slabs of rock or plates that are constantly moving over the mantle of the Earth. The movement of these plates can cause enormous pressure to build. Earthquakes are the result of nature's efforts to relieve this pressure. Likewise, the theories of plate tectonics can also be applied to another natural phenomenon, volcanoes. Only in this case, the release of pressure forces molten lava out of the Earth's core, much like a boiling teapot spits out steam. Besides helping us better understand earthquakes and volcanoes, Knowing more about the physical characteristics of a place can also give us a clearer idea of its typical weather or climate. For instance, we can understand how on the same day in December it can be snowing in one city while being warm and mild in another. We can also better understand why the vegetation found in this desert is not the same as in this swampland. These are all examples of the physical characteristics of a place. Human characteristics of a place are those features that were either constructed, modified, or in some way influenced by humans. These features include the Great Pyramids of Egypt, the ruins of the Colosseum in Rome, as well as more recent man-made landmarks like the Eiffel Tower in France. The Statue of Liberty in New York Harbor, and the Hollywood sign in Los Angeles. This category could also include more subtle examples of human characteristics like the rice paddies in East Asia, and the wheat fields in Kansas. Our third theme of geography is relationships within places. This theme is also sometimes referred to as human environment interaction. What is an environment? An environment is defined by scientists as the sum of the conditions that surround and influence an organism. For our purposes, the organism in question is us. The world that surrounds us is our environment. We'll start our examination of this theme by asking the following questions. How does our environment affect the way we live? How do we use our environment? Why and how have we changed our environment? What have been some of the consequences of these changes? To find the answers to these questions, let's take a look at some examples of relationships within places. We know that people choose to live in virtually every environment found on the face of the earth. For instance, despite the terrible cold of northern Russia, millions of people still make it their home. The Bedouins of North Africa have just the opposite problem. They have learned to live in the hot and arid conditions found in the Sahara Desert. And in the United States, still other people choose to live in areas prone to frequent floods. Why do so many millions of people choose to live in areas that frequently experience floods, heat, and cold? Everyone has their own reasons, of course, but in truth, there are very few ideal places. We must accept the fact that there are some things about our environment, like seismic activity and changing weather conditions, that we simply cannot change. Adapting to what we cannot change is one way in which we can interact within our environment. The types of clothes we wear outdoors, the types of crops we grow, the types of homes we build, the outdoor activities we engage in, and even some of the games we play are all influenced by our environment. Still, there are many things about our environment we can change. 
When the local topography or ground conditions have not been suitable for traditional farming techniques, people have learned to terrace mountainsides. When food would not grow in arid and semi-arid climates, people learned to irrigate their land. When rivers or other bodies of water blocked our way, we have built bridges to cross over them. And as automobiles became a popular means of transportation, we cut through mountains to build roads and major highways to facilitate our mobility. These are just some of the ways in which we have changed our environment to suit our needs. Some of these changes have been beneficial, and others have had unexpected side effects. Sometimes they have been both. For example, by diverting water in order to irrigate regions for farming, we have caused portions of the rivers, like the once mighty Colorado River, to literally dry up. Likewise, poor agricultural methods and overgrazing of animals combined with periods of severe drought have led to the expansion of the Sahara Desert into the Sahel region of Africa. Our love for the automobile and other motor vehicles have caused serious air pollution problems. To obtain more lumber for construction and more land for grazing, we have cleared millions of acres of rainforest. This has had a very grave impact on our environment. These are just a few of the detrimental side effects of our actions to manipulate our surroundings. Fortunately, in recent years, our attitude about our environment has started to change. We now realize that we must think before we act. Many concerned citizens of our planet are now trying to correct some of the problems of the past. People are replanting trees, picking up litter, and working hard to recycle. Many places are now requiring motor vehicles to pass strict emissions tests to help decrease the amount of pollution in our air. There are many things we all can do to help preserve our planet's valuable resources. Our fourth geographic theme is movement. This theme is concerned with the movement of people, goods, and ideas around the world. All kinds of goods are shipped from place to place. Cars, bananas, apples, clothing, electronic goods, and precious gems like diamonds. These goods are transported in ships, trucks, trains, and in airplanes. Since no one nation can produce everything it needs, they must all trade with each other. We call the dependence of one nation for the goods of another nation interdependence. People also move from place to place. As populations grow and the people seek better opportunities, people move or migrate. Communication or the spread of certain ideas and beliefs can also be included in the category of movement. For instance, the spread of various religions like Buddhism can be traced to specific settlement patterns. Likewise, the influence of Latin on most every European language is a direct result of conquests of the Roman Empire. Today, communications and the transmission of information is instantaneous. With the help of orbiting satellites, we can view live coverage of sports and newsworthy events almost anywhere in the world. We can also communicate with others using telephones or the electronic bulletin boards in our computers. Faxing documents has now become a way of life for many business people. Our fifth and final theme of geography is region. A region is defined as a group of places bound together by one or more similar characteristics. Continents are physical regions. Countries are political regions. There are also climate, vegetation, and landform regions. In the United States, there is a farming region known as the Corn Belt in the Midwest. And in France, there is a region of vineyards known as the Wine Region. Some other regions include Southeast Asia, North Africa, Scandinavia, and the Caribbean Basin. So whether it's learning more about regions, movement, locations, relationships within places, or the places themselves, the five themes of geography help us to better understand the world in which we live.